Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, it sounds like a serious situation going on there. Here in our country, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm also very much interested uh, in this, uh, you know, protection and preservation of the coastal environment, coastal and marine environment, and therefore I thought of uh, talking with you. Uh, Great. And, uh, yes, uh, and uh, uh, I want to know, Doctor, now, uh, uh, we had a, uh, we experienced a, a fire on board uh, a cargo vessel anchored near the Colombo uh, port. And uh, I think uh, uh, that caused uh, much uh, marine pollution. And also yeah. uh, it, it was a threat for marine life, also human beings. And uh, I would like to know uh, the measures that you are going to take as a, uh, I mean, uh, an organization with regard to these issues and what type of, uh, you know, uh, remedies can we apply to overcome a situation like this? You know, it, it's interesting because every scenario is a little bit different, but I did a documentary several years ago. Um, you can find it on YouTube called Disaster at Nightingale. Mm -hmm. And this was where a bulk carrier, just like this ship, um, carrying soybeans from China, um, went full speed and crashed into one of the most remote islands, inhabited islands in the world, in, in Nightingale Island, part of the Tristan de Cunha um, group of islands in the South Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And what the investigation, well, the, the aftermath was terrible because um, this remote group of islands is a paradise for birds. If you like birds, you go here, especially penguins. And um, the southern rockhopper penguin is an endangered species. And most of its, 40% of its population lives in this area. And tens of thousands of them were killed not from, you know, from a big oil tanker, but just from the fuel that this tanker had, or this bulk carrier had for its own engines. Um, and so the investigation revealed that the regulations for these bulk carriers are not very um, stringent. And this vessel was allowed to sail with um, nothing more than paper charts and a compass, you know, basically. They, ha they had radar, but it looked like one of the mates had been on medication. They saw this big object coming toward them. They thought it was a rain cloud. You know, it was just this series of, of errors. But I think that it, it points to two things. One is... Um, the lack of, of strong oversight. You know, you can go to a country or a flag of convenience, as they call it, go to a country, every country has its own standards. Malta is where this one was registered, has pretty low standards. Um, the other is this happened in a very remote area. And if you look at the ocean, I guess most places are pretty remote, um, unless you crash your ship into Los Angeles or uh, some big port, you know, um, the response, the ability of these people to respond, this was an extreme example because there's no airport and the fastest you could get help there would be one week by ship uh, from Cape Town, South Africa. But still, you know, that's an extreme example, but the importance of being able to have a network ready to deal with oil spills, they don't have to be enormous, but spills like this is, is really important. The last thing I'll say is this is a unique situation because they're carrying nitric acid. And, you know, that's going to kill everything around that ship. Yes. Uh, um, the good news it, there is it carried that tons of uh, hazardous nitric uh, acid, I think. The, the vessel exactly. 
and also i think as microplastics also split uh, spilt uh, into the uh. water and that actually a uh, big threat for the marine life and yeah so so that stuff is so concentrated and so strong that everything around that ship probably on the bottom um won't survive i mean that's just my my guess i don't know how the local conditions are how energetic that water is the more energetic the better because it will help disperse it and the same true with the oil um oil i'm less concerned about because that does disperse over time but it's the immediate impact of the oil that's really a problem and then i understood just from the article i read this is a tourist area and that's of course devastating to the economy yeah. the the good news about nitric acid is that it's not persistent um it will dissolve it will hit once and then you know eventually disappear it's not going to be persistent but as an an example we'll go back to los angeles um how, how long does it take to disappear i don't know exactly but i don't think it would be very long i think it would dissolve in water and basically just be diluted very quickly um the the but, problem but, just but when the when these microplastics when when that problem is concerned it uh, is going to be a last long i mean long lasting problem no eh? again it depends on i mean yes of course because all that stuff goes in the water but it depends on how well that those microplastics can disperse if they all sink to the bottom and get into the sediment there then you've got a localized issue that's almost impossible to clean up you know you've got a you know and that stuff of course can get into the food chain as we now know but the comparison i was going to make was something that happened in the 70s there was a company in los angeles called montrose chemical company these guys were evil <laughs> and they took ddt and they poured it down the drain I don't you know the circumstances I don't fully understand I think they were trying to hide it barrels of DDT down the drain now that is a persistent uh chemical and it got into Santa Monica Bay into the sediments and to this day every time that there's a major storm event I did analysis on this back in the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. but you can see an increase in the mortality of benthic life because this ddt comes up and in a storm it percolates up and it kills everything okay. so that's the opposite extreme that's why i'm saying you're lucky even though it's terrible but it's not something like ddt which you know which was why we got rid of using it in the first place was just stays in the environment concentrates in the food chain and all of the rest and acid has an immediate localized effect but it's not going to persist in the in the environment very nice to meet you yes uh, you actually your, your service is much appreciated because you do a lot to preserve our i mean marine resources uh, thank you very much for thank giving you. me this opportunity well you're we working well. thank you very much thank you thank you doctor you are sharing some information already and really thank you for that actually he's a uh, he's from uh, sonal education department teacher advisor so uh, he was Perfect. the teacher of me and uh, i was wow. talking i was talking about the presentation that we are going to present